Hey, it's Greg Cotton here with uh, MaritimeGuardian.com and today I'm going to put a, sh a, a handle on this broken shovel handle. If you watched the other day, I, I think I tried to pick up a 30 pound rock and this thing broke. Uh, I can feel it. <laughs> uh, it broke right out of knot and uh, the spruce isn't the strongest uh, wood in the world for this sort of thing. It's not an ideal shovel handle wood, but it's adequate. Um, the shovel I broke I'd been using for about three years and it only broke because I broke it on purpose. If you're careful you won't break them. And the only reason I'm doing this is, is if you, you see the uh, shovel head at a yard sale for a buck, right? Buy it. It's always good to have a couple extra shovels. You're always losing shovels. Uh, buy it and then uh, you can fit your own handle. Instead of going to the hardware store and spending 10 or 15 bucks for a handle, um, just fit one. I'm going to show you how to do this right here with really simple tools. Um, so here's a, a spruce handle that I made, oh, I don't know, about two or three years ago. And this one's uh, much better fitted. So I waited till the wood was good and dry before I uh, put it in the sleeve here. This, this is called the sleeve, this, this part of the shovel handle here in the neck. Right, so you can see there's no no uh, spaces there. It's nice and tight. That's what you want. It's just a little less likely to break if you do that. Um, this green one, whenever I put any kind of stress on it, it would groan and tell me, you know, he's off, I'm going to break, right? And that's Another thing, once you get used to using shovels and stuff like that, they don't break if you're, uh, you know, uh, attuned to them and, and careful. Um, anyway, so we got to get the, the head off of this first, the, the actual metal part off first. Um, you can see there was little holes. If you get a, um, if you get a uh, shovel from a hardware store, usually this part of the shovel is peened on. It's got a piece of metal that's been uh, bent over, he didn't bent over so it won't come off. So you'll have to file that off with a, 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 a you know, a file that you can get for three bucks. Um, this one here, when I replace them, I just use, um, why isn't that showing? Uh, a little screw like that. Right, just a short little, I don't know what that is, half inch, uh, half inch screw. Works fine. <laughs> works totally fine. I'm sure they just peen them because in a factory it's faster. Anyway, that works fine. Then we got to pop this thing off. Uh, I got uh, two trees close to one another right here. That's an ideal place to just stick it between and pull. Let me put my gloves on so I don't get a splinter. If this doesn't work, we'll use something a bit more sophisticated, but it should work. There we go. Done. All right. Now. Next step, I got a nice piece of wood here. This is a spruce that I cut down in the woods in the winter, and it's nice and dry. It's got a bit of a split at the end. That's because I dried it quickly. I, I put it by my wood stove. The, the best way to dry things is sort of leave them out to weather. I don't know if you can see that split there, but it's split, right? It's not ideal. But that's okay, because it's a bit longer than we need. I like the length of my shovels to be uh, the, the handle before I fit it onto the uh, actual shovel head to come up to my shoulder. So I got about, on this piece of wood here, I got about, I don't know, almost a foot I can remove because um, it's a bit long. And di different people say it should come up to your armpit and all this sort of stuff. I, I, I like a really long shovel handle. I find that you don't have to bend over quite as far if it's nice and long. Or if you're trying to get stuff. Um, out of the back of a truck or something like that. You don't have to reach quite as much, right? You can just use the length of the shovel. And, you know, if you need it to be short, you can just shorten up your grip, right? It can be whatever length you want it to be. Or if you're on one side of a garden bed, you can reach to the other side, right? So for me, I just prefer a nice long shovel. I'm also really tall, so I find um, uh, shovel handles, shovels in general that you buy are a bit uh, short anyway. So I kind of look forward to when the uh, handles wear out and break so I can replace them with a uh, nice long handle that, that suits me. So uh, anyway, we're a bit long here so I got to take some of this material off. Also you can see here that, I don't know if that comes across on camera, but it's got a bit of a bend here, right? 
so that's not ideal too. And the whole, I can look down the length of this. It's relatively, um, it's relatively straight, but there, there's a bit of a bend right here, and we can use some of it to our advantage. But it is a bit too much. It's going to affect the function of the shovel. So I think what I'll do is, I don't know how well you can see that, but it bends right. The bend is right there. So I'm going to cut it off right about here and take advantage of that bend. Because I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to taper this down to fit into the sleeve of the shovel, so I can use the bent part to my advantage. Right, you really can't see that angle there. Let me see what you see in there. Yeah, I think you can see it here. It, it, it goes up and then it bends down. All right, so I can use that to my advantage, right, um, in, in fitting the shovel to the, uh, to the handle. So first I'm going to cut off uh, the split part. And I also need some sort of uh, vise to allow me to work on this uh, shovel. And I thought I'd show you, uh, I mean, I, I've got a vise in my, in my workshop. I can use that, but maybe you don't have that sort of thing. If you got a vise, just clamp it in the vise. But I thought I'd show a way to uh, just use a couple of trees. Uh, if you've got a couple of trees that are close to one another, or if you've got two, any two removable, there's lots of different ways to uh, improvise a vise, right? But uh, anyway, I'm just going to show you one way to do that here. Okay, so I've got uh, an improvised vise set up here. There's probably a couple dozen ways to do this. Uh, so, I mean, this is not the only way. probably isn't even the best way. It's just what I figured out on the fly. Uh, there's probably more elegant ways to pull this off. So you got two trees that are near one another. And one of those trees is a big, heavy, solid tree. The other one doesn't matter so much. It's good if they're both big, heavy, solid trees. Uh, so, you attach it here with just, I mean, the stronger this attachment is, the better. The main thing is it can't move up or down. So you attach it here. And then over here you attach it at the height, right around waist height. That's, you want to be working at waist, sort of near your belly button. That's where you, it's the most easy to do this sort of work. So you want it about that high. For me, that's there, give or take. And then on this side, you attach a rope. Let me bring the camera over and show you what I've done here. You put the rope on this side of the tree because you're going to you're going to be pulling that way, right? You're going to be drawing a knife across, pulling that way. So this this will bind up here and it won't go that way, right? And this is just a little loop here, right? And uh, you attach it to the other end. So you have a loop here. You go around the tree over there, and uh, you attach it with a, a trucker's hitch type uh, type knot at the other end. And then if it's not tight enough, see how it's it's double? If it's not tight enough, doesn't matter what your knots are. You want knots that'll come back out. Use uh, half hitch type knots that'll come back out. But uh, if it's not tight enough, you just put something through it and twist it around, right? You're using a, what's that called? A, a, oh, the name for that is just not, a windlass. I, I believe that's the term, a windlass. So I just put the shovel through and tighten it up here. I'll show you. For those that are familiar. So I got two strings here, they loop around this tree, and I have a very simple, I'm gonna take my gloves off to do this, but you know, I just got a loop here, right? So I've, uh, this just goes through the loop, get this at the height I want it, tighten it, hold it with your thumb, put a little loop through. I got a video on knots. Anyway, that's all you need, that, that should hold. But that's still not as tight as I would like, it's a bit loose. So I want that guitar or piano wire tight. So I just put something through, something that's heavier at one end than the other, like a shovel. Right, you just wrap it a few times. One, two, three, four. Oh, well, it feels good and tight. That seems tight. Right, that'll stay right there. All right. So that's much tighter now. This probably has a lot less uh, play in it. Let me turn this around. Here. This has a lot less play in it now, but it still has some play, right? Um, so the other way to take that play out is you just get a couple sticks. Let me turn you around like this. 
Now let me change the angle. Again, there's probably a dozen ways to do this, but if you've got a couple sticks lying around, bendy sticks like these, these are just from spruce trees down in the swamp down there, and I cut these to use as uh, stakes for tomatoes and things like that uh, months ago. Anyway, just stick it behind one tree and just bend it behind the other like that. Be careful, I wouldn't want to have any kids standing around this. <laughs> it's likely to bounce back out. Just jam it in like that. Right now that's much tighter, very tight. Doesn't want to move. Or it's tight enough for what I'm about to do, right? Okay, so as I said, I wanted to cut a bit of the end off here. So I got my, uh, let's cut it back to where that crack starts. Right there. I think that's probably good, yeah. Alright, so now we want to work this end down so it'll fit onto my shovel. And you can make it a little bigger, it'll, it'll push the shovel out so you can, it's always good to be making it a bit bigger than it needs to be, because uh, you can't put the wood back on, right? <laughs> um, so definitely this is the right size. Looking around the shovel here I can see it's about, oh, one eighth of an inch, no, two or three millimeters too large in diameter for this. So we've got to bring it down a bit. So we got a number of, uh, I put my gloves on, my fingers are getting kind of numb. We've got a number of tools we can use for this. And uh, I'll start at the most uh, sophisticated and I'll work my way down. Um, so uh, one tool you can use is a, uh, a really nice uh, planer. <laughs> That's the, if you've got one of those, uh, you can turn that whole piece of wood into a beautifully smooth uh, handle if you want with one of these. It'll make it pretty straight and I mean this is the best way to go if you've got one of these. But if you don't, uh, the next best thing is one of these. It's called the spoke shave. This is an amazing tool. If I was to, you know, disappear into the wilderness for the rest of my life, I'd bring one of these. <laughs> That's not going to happen, but anyway, this is just a, what you can do with one of these is amazing. It has um, it's got, uh, you know, it has all the advantages of a planer, but um, certain advantages of a draw knife as well. So that's called a spoke shave, S-P-O-K-E, spoke shave. And I used to use these for making spokes on uh, wagon wheels back in the olden times, right? Uh, I just got this at a, I got this at a yard sale for, I don't know, 15 bucks or something like that. If you want to buy one of these brand new at like Lee Valley or something, they're, they're not cheap. Um, this is called a draw knife. Again, I got this at a yard sale. It's got a, a major imperfection uh, right here on the blade, but it still works totally fine. Yeah, put an edge on it, works great. Uh, draw knife is a great tool to have kicking around. One of the more ideal tools for, for doing this sort of thing. And that's what these three, this, the spoke shave is sort of like the something in between a plane and a draw knife, right? It's, that's why it's a great tool because it's in between. It can do things this can do and it can do things this can do. Uh, it's in between. These uh, draw knives are really good for taking off a lot of material and uh, you can be, you'd be surprised how much how quickly you can shape wood with one of these. Although if you've got a, a bad back uh, it can... Uh, <laughs> I peeled the bark off about 30 trees one day and then I, uh, I couldn't uh, walk for a couple weeks <laughs> after doing that. Anyway. Takes practice to get good one of these. Um, another tool you need for shaping the handle is some sort of a heavy file, like a rasp, right? You can get these for about five bucks or less, um, if, if you know where to look, right? I wouldn't get one of these used, because once, you know, if you're getting them used, I mean, you can feel, you put, run your, your finger across here, and if it feels really sharp, it's probably good, right? And these wear out uh, nowhere near like regular, you know, files for metal. But, Anyway, one of these is sort of the ideal tool, very aggressive. One of these is also good, not quite as aggressive, but it's got, um, you know, two different, it's got a round side and a flat side, and it's got two different kinds of uh, um, file, right? A more aggressive file and a finer file, so it's good for smoothing things down. This is a good all-around tool. 
if you're going to buy just one thing, right, one of these is good. You need some kind of file and some sort of knife type thing. Uh, you can also use a knife for this. That's what I'm going to do today because I'm just going to pretend that I'm someone that doesn't have anything, right? Uh, this is a knife I got at yard sale. I put a handle on it. It's, but I, I reckon I got this for about a dollar, but it's actually a Solingen blade. It's a very expensive uh, piece of metal. I find this really good for shaping wood. And then you got your $20 Mora knife. Um, inexpensive, but uh, very, very sharp and good for shaping wood. So this is what I'm going to use um, uh, for the most of this operation. So uh, what do we do to start? The first thing we've got to do is turn this knife into something we can safely use. So because, uh, uh, let me just, you see me here? What I want to be doing is pulling towards myself, so I have to grab the blade. And I mean, you can, you can do that, right? You can do that. Um, but it's a bit iffy to be grabbing the, a sharp blade like that with your hands. So uh, uh, another a safe way to do that is to get a, a piece of wood like the one we cut off the end, and to drive the knife into the piece of wood. So it becomes like a makeshift one of these, right? Now the greener this wood is, the easier that is to do. I don't know if this will actually work, um, but anyway, we can try. Let me just do that over here somewhere. All right, so I got a piece of uh, alder here. It's a nice, uh, it's a hardwood, but it's relatively soft in terms of driving knives into it. And I got this. A uh, piece that I cut off the end of the shovel just to use as a mallet. So I'm just going to put this on here and uh, very carefully pound that in. That split a bit, but I think it'll hold up. We'll see. Anyway. And now we have an improvised draw knife. Right? So now I can go to work on this. Let's see how well this holds up. But uh, you just take a very gentle pulls. Don't try to take off too much of any one go, just be gentle. Take your time. Follow the contour of the wood. You can tell I think I've already made this. I made this too narrow. I took it down a bit too aggressively, I think. No, it's I think it's okay. What you're shooting for is to be gradual, right? A very gradual. Oh, I think this got turned. Yeah, I made an error. All right, so now we're ready to shape this thing down. Look at the shovel. Haven't got very far to go. This is fairly straight. There's a bit of a bend here, so I want to remove that contour of it. That's pretty. A bit of a bend that way, actually. All right, you just keep checking. This is a gradual process. You just take off a bit of material and then you check. Take off a little bit more and check. All right, go easy. Don't, don't uh, try to be a, a superman or a superwoman. Just be gentle. 
Make sure your knife is good and sharp. Most of my knives I only sharpen them once a year. And uh, before I use them I just run a sharpening steel over them. The sort of thing you'd have in a kitchen, that's all I sharpen this. I just I just hone this with a sharpening steel. I don't know why they call them sharpening steels. They're, they're honing steels. They're for honing, they're not for sharpening. Anyway, you're just gradually working here with an eye to having a, a, a very slight taper down towards the end. Right. It's going to be a bit narrower at the end. At the, that's all that's required is a slight taper. I'm not pulling hard here as well. I'm pulling very gently on this. Very, just very easy, relaxed strokes. Very easy strokes. If your knife is sharp, you don't need, you don't need strength. You need skill. Technique and precision. Let's have a look at that. Don't get carried away. <laughs> go too far and uh, then you've gone too far. Well, you want to work this so it'll go down about that far at least, right? Right, so I can see there's a knot right here. I know that this is going to be up here. But the whole thing needs to be brought down from that, from that point. Another battery here. <laughs> Hope we can make it under the wire. Things always take longer when you're filming them. And I'm using the the uh, you know primitive tools. But I like doing stuff like that. I like showing people that they don't need uh, you know to spend a fortune on you know precision carpentry tools to do some pretty basic stuff. You know this is a The settlers, and certainly the indigenous people that lived here before, they uh, they got by without any of that stuff. It might take a few more minutes, but if you're only going to do something once or twice a year, why do you need a tool that's designed for you know mass production? I'm not a professional shovel hander or fitter. If I was, I'd I'd have I'd probably use a bandsaw for this. <laughs> That'd probably be the easiest thing or, or just a machine that does it in a second. But uh, you know I don't do this for a living. I just do it when it's when it's needed. Oh, it's a bit aggressive. Even this is a bit of a workout. I'm getting I'm doing all the compensating here with my hips. It's a bit of a workout. Alright so there we go. Let's have a look at that. That's close, really close. These sort of little, little chippy ones, and the closer your arms are to your to your torso, the more uh, control you have. If you're reaching out really far, you don't have control. If your arms are like anchored into your sides, um, you're you're much more stable. Just make sure your face isn't, <laughs> you don't want to be there, right? <laughs> you don't want that situation. All right. Okay, I'm comfortable with I think that's okay. Now I'm just going to take this uh, this rasp to it. This is just good for, you know, this, this has this uh, uneven texture. It just files off all the sort of corners. Makes it a bit smoother. It only takes a minute. You can just 
uh, go by eye. Right, go by feel. You can just tell what the taper should look like by eye. Now, if you're building an airplane, <laughs> you don't want to be going by eye. <laughs> you want to leave that up to the science. But for a shovel, oh, it's lovely building your own tools by eye. It's almost like you think you're going to have uh, magical powers. I remember that episode of The Simpsons where Homer uh, made his own baseball bat. Wonder bat, I think he called it. <laughs> and he was the uh, number one slugger in his league until they brought some ringers on his team. And then I think a, a real... Major League Baseball pitcher threw a ball at his bat. bat. I think it just uh, turned into flames. <laughs> Vaporized it. <laughs> that was great. Anyway, I think that's that's pretty good. To me, that looks. Uh, let's give it a quick once over, all the way around lightly. Not pushing hard here. We're letting the file do the work. You can do this whole job with a file if, you, if you're so inclined. You don't, you know, you don't need to use the knife for this, really. You could, you could do the whole thing with a file. I think I find the knife is good for getting bulk material off, and you use the file for getting it that that nice uh, circle shape, right? Because you want it circular, so it fits nice and evenly into the. Uh, sleeve of the shovel. That's fairly good. Alright. Give you a look at that. Right? It's fairly round. Can you see how well that you see how well that vice held it in place, right? It wasn't any real problem. It's 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 you have to loosen the string over there to adjust its position or to even turn the stick around. But I mean, for something you can slap together in a couple of minutes, it's a lot cheaper than going and spend $80 on a vise, right? Anyway, let's see how this thing goes on. Or if it goes on. I'm not doing anything special to this. This was just, you know, if you're, um, if you've got an old shovel, you should sharpen it. That's a good idea. And if I had more battery, I'd sh it's certainly a lot easier to sharpen a shovel when it's not attached uh, to the actual handle, because you can stick it in a nice vise and uh, take a file to it. Perhaps I'll do another episode on, uh, on conditioning the wood with uh, like a natural preservative and sharpening up the blade. It's not hard, but uh, you'll, any shovel, if you don't know about this, if you keep the, this outer edge sharp, it's way easier to use. You need half the strength to use a sharp shovel. Totally worth doing. Anyway, let's see how this fits. Reasonably good. You want it snug. Oh, man, I'm gonna take off a little bit more. This is just fine tuning here. The shovel's nice and <laughs> dirty and rusty, it'll leave some stains that tell you where the, the high points are, so that's kind of an advantage. Anyway, just removing a micron. Often if it doesn't fit, it's not because it's at this point, it's not because it's too big or too wide or too whatever, it's, it's because it's uneven in some way. If you can figure out where that unevenness is, you've got it. All right. See how that works. That's better. 
All right, it's good to put a bit of oil on here, like a motor oil or something like that, but I'm not going to bother with that today. Um, so, just get her on loose. Now we got to undo this. Done. All right. That was easy to undo. <laughs> so, how do we get this properly seated? We just use gravity. Just hit it. So looking at that, I can tell, and I'm out of battery too, but anyway, it's a bit too steep. I gotta adjust it a little bit. Anyway, it's close. But you can see a bit of a little bit of daylight right there. Right? You don't want that. You want it tight all the way around. So I gotta take this off and, and take it down a little bit more, mess around with it a bit more, but that's the general idea. All right, so I got that on, right? I got, I got two seconds of battery left here. So here we are at the scene of the crime where I uh, broke the old shovel. Let's see if this new shovel's up to the test. Right. Ooh. Picking it up the wrong way, still strong enough. All right, so that's how you put a handle on a shovel. <laughs> I hope that was uh, helpful. I don't know uh, how well this video is going to turn out. I was sort of all over the place, but that's a general idea. How to turn a piece of spruce tree into a shovel handle. If you're good to it, it'll probably last you five years or more. I don't know. It really depends on whether you leave it outside a lot or what you treat it with or whatever. I'll probably do another video in a little while on a, 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 a way to treat this. I mean, you're just going to put some sort of oil on this, right? You could use uh, linseed oil or whatever. Uh, used cooking oil, whatever you can get your hands on. Um, so I hope that was helpful. I hope you found that useful. And uh, until next time, get out there, get at it. Have fun in your garden. Thanks for watching.